It has the largest population out of all Arab countries, it is home to the Nile River, and it gets only 2.5 centimeters of rainfall per year. These are just three of the things that you will learn, or already know, about Egypt. Hello everyone, welcome to the GeoFocus channel, and my name is Paul. Today I'm going to be talking about Egypt. The Arab Republic of Egypt is one of the most important countries in the Arab world. With a population of 90,354,000, it is the most populous Arab country, and it is culturally influential throughout the region. It is also a country with a wondrous ancient history that has helped to shape modern Egypt. Egypt is located in two different continents. Most of Egypt lies in the northeast corner of Africa, while the Sinai Peninsula is situated in southwest Asia. It is usually classified as part of the Middle East. There is no single definition of what exactly constitutes the Middle East, but it usually includes the countries of Southwest Asia plus Egypt. It is bordered to the west by Libya, to the south by Sudan, and to the northeast by Israel and the Gaza Strip. With a total land area of 1,010,408 square kilometers, it is the 30th largest country in the world. That makes it slightly bigger than Tanzania and slightly smaller than Mauritania. Much of Egypt is covered by the Sahara Desert, which makes most of the country dry and uninhabitable. There are a few oases punctuating the desert, but most of Egypt's population lives along the Nile River, which flows 1,600 kilometers throughout Egypt. The Nile, which is commonly thought to be the longest river in the world, supplies the majority of Egypt's water. It is really the only thing allowing for agriculture in Egypt because Egypt gets very little rainfall. Without the Nile, Egypt would be all desert. The result is that 99% of Egypt's population lives along the Nile River or the Nile River Delta, only about 5% of Egypt's land. That makes the Nile River Valley and Delta one of the most densely populated areas in the world. The Nile River Valley and Delta constitute one of Egypt's major regions. The other regions are the Western Desert, also known as the Libyan Desert, the Eastern Desert, and the Sinai Peninsula. The western and eastern deserts are part of the Sahara Desert, by the way, so don't be confused by the names. The western desert covers two-thirds of Egypt and consists of a low plateau and the sand dunes of the Great Sand Sea. It is largely uninhabited, with little vegetation except for a number of oases which receive fresh water from the Nile or from local groundwater sources. The eastern desert is much more mountainous, with the Red Sea hills extending to the Red Sea and the Gulf of Suez. These hills reach an elevation of 1,900 meters. Such hills also extend into the southern part of the Sinai Peninsula, this little triangle-shaped peninsula right here. The highest mountain is St. Catherine, at an elevation of 2,642 meters. Also nearby is Mount Sinai, where Moses is thought to have received the Ten Commandments from God. The central Sinai consists of a lower plateau, and the northern Sinai is a sandy coastal plain that extends up to Israel and the Gaza Strip. The Gaza Strip was under the control of Egypt for most of the time from 1948 until 1967. During the 1956 Sinai War between Egypt and France, the UK, and Israel, Israel took control of the Gaza Strip and Sinai, but they returned it the following year. But again in 1967, Israel seized the Gaza Strip and the Sinai Peninsula in the Six-Day War, and this time they kept them until 1979 when they started to return them under a peace agreement with Egypt. But Egypt refused to take back the Gaza Strip this time. There are a number of popular tourist towns in Sinai, including Sharm el-Sheikh, Dahab, and Nueba, and these are all situated on the Red Sea. Egypt has 1,705 kilometers of coastline along the Red Sea, where you can enjoy some of the best scuba diving and snorkeling in the world. I've spent some time in Dahab, and I had a great time there, enjoying the sort of laid-back backpacker lifestyle, going snorkeling, enjoying the sea life, all of that sort of thing. It's a beautiful place. Egypt's other coastline is on the Mediterranean Sea, extending 1,050 kilometers from east to west. Egypt's second largest city, Alexandria, lies on the Mediterranean Sea and also at the edge of the Nile Delta. This location puts Alexandria in danger of rising water levels due to climate change. Just a 25 centimeter increase in the water level would put 60% of Alexandria's residents below sea level and at risk of flooding. Alexandria is Egypt's most important port and the location of 40% of Egypt's industry, so a rise in the water levels could cause a severe disruption to Egypt's economy. Moving south through the Nile Delta, we arrive at Cairo, the capital of Egypt and its largest city. In fact, it is the largest city in Africa and in all of the Arab world. 
There are over 10 million people living in the city itself and over 20 million people in the Greater Cairo area. The world-famous Giza pyramids are located in the Greater Cairo area, and those are one of the main attractions for visitors to Cairo. It's an exciting, bustling city with an amazing atmosphere, but it can be overwhelming for visitors, and you need to be careful of all the pushy salespeople and the scammers who target tourists. Don't trust anybody who approaches you on the street and claims to have a relative in your home country. Scam 101. Cairo's Midan Tahrir was the site of huge protests against the Hosni Mubarak regime back in 2011, protests that spread throughout the entire country. In the end, Mubarak was ousted and a military government took over. Then Mohamed Morsi, who was a member of the Muslim Brotherhood, won an election and became the first democratically elected president in Egypt's history. But Morsi was ousted by the military back in 2013. That's right, first the military ousted Hosni Mubarak and held elections, and then they ousted the man who won the elections. Confusing, I know. About 90% of Egypt's population is Muslim, and 9% are Coptic Christians, and about 1% are Christians of other denominations. The official language of Egypt is Arabic, and modern standard Arabic is the language of the media and education. But there is also the Egyptian dialect of Arabic, which is used for everyday speech and is quite distinct from modern standard Arabic. Much of the Arab world's entertainment industry is centered in Cairo, so a lot of movies, TV shows, and songs are in Egyptian Arabic. So Egyptian Arabic is widely understood throughout the Arab world. Egypt's ancient civilization is a source of fascination for people from all over the world. We can't go into detail about ancient Egyptian history here, but the kingdoms of Lower Egypt and Upper Egypt existed in the area as early as 5500 BCE. Around 3200 BCE, Egypt was united under one king. Egyptian kings were known as pharaohs and were thought to be living gods. Because of Egypt's dry climate and its stone architecture, today Egypt still has a lot of remnants of its ancient history. The Giza pyramids, Luxor, and Aswan are some of the biggest attractions for visitors to Egypt. When's the best time to visit Egypt? Well, the summer is probably a bad idea unless you're insane like me and you want to go in July and get your whole body sunburnt. Egypt is generally hot and dry. Summer temperatures in Cairo normally reach 35 degrees, but often reach over 40 degrees. The southern areas are even hotter, with temperatures very commonly rising above 45 degrees. November to March is generally much more comfortable, with daily temperatures in Cairo reaching about 20 degrees, and temperatures in Luxor reaching 25 to 30 degrees. But be warned that temperatures at night do get quite cool, so you might want to bring some warm clothing in addition to your shorts and t-shirt. The animal most commonly associated with Egypt is the camel, even though camels are not indigenous to Egypt, but they have been there since ancient times when they were imported from elsewhere. Other animals in Egypt include the rim gazelle, predatorial birds like vultures, eagles, hawks, falcons, and owls, and over 30 species of snakes, including the Egyptian cobra and the horned viper. But don't be scared of the snakes or the scams or the political situation of Egypt. As long as you do your homework and you study up on the situation before you go and you know the risks, then you will know how to protect yourself and you will be able to enjoy the beauty and majesty of Egypt, both ancient and modern. Thank you for watching the GeoFocus channel. Have a nice day.